We're told that the random laws of chance produce everything we observe. Atoms slammed into others, billions of lifeless years passed with the cosmos set on automatic until at least on one planet life began. That's the story, everyone has heard it, yet everyone can feel how empty and unsatisfying the narrative is. We can't fathom how lumps of carbon and drops of water acquired a sense of smell. Subscribers to this dumb random universe model, meaning almost everyone, well, except for you folks, <laughs> state that absolutely everything appears by chance. It seems reasonable. Chance makes it seem plausible that a cosmos as numb and insensate as Sheol could come up with hummingbirds by randomness alone. The dumb universe paradigm requires that we explain the complex physical and biological architecture we see around us by some means other than God. And chance is all we have. So the dumb universe model sinks or swims on the life raft of randomness. Randomness is also a central key to, to evolution, where, of course, it works splendidly. Darwin wasn't whistling in the wind with natural selection. It's obvious that giraffes developed long necks because those giraffian predecessors who received random mutations for longer necks had a survival edge. They could grab leaves and fruit from higher branches over time, and it doesn't take terribly long to select longer, necks, longer necked animals, gave them a leg up. Evolution works, and it's based on random mutations coupled with natural selection. That being so, we make the mistake of applying thinking that chance is the, is the explanation for everything. This includes the entire universe, from the laws of nature themselves to the arising of life and consciousness. Chance is a process that is misunderstood. The most famous illustration is the monkey and typewriter thing. We've all heard it. A million monkeys type a ra on, randomly on a million keyboards for a million years, you'd get all the great works of literature. So would this be true? About 10 years ago, some wildlife caretakers actually put a bunch of typewriters out in front of some macaques to see what would happen. The animals typed nothing. Instead, they threw some of the machines on the ground and used them as toilets. They didn't create any written wisdom whatsoever. Ha ha, but let's carry out a thought experiment. So could a million monkeys typing a million years truly create Hamlet? Believe it or not, such a problem is entirely solvable. Keyboards have a lot of places to push. There are 58 keys on a typical typewriter. So let's consider the difficulty of creating just the 15 opening, opening characters of Moby Dick, Call Me Ishmael. How many random tries would be needed? Given 58 possible keys, it would take 283 trillion trillion attempts. But remember, we have a million monkeys working, and let's say they work 45, they type 45 words a minute, and they never stop to rest or sleep. How much time would it take for one of them to type, call me Ishmael? You know, the answer is 36 trillion years, or two and a half thousand times the age of the universe. So a million monkeys typing furiously would never reproduce the opening three words of a book. So forget the dumb universe thing, it's bogus. <laughs> so, ba <laughs> so back to your, our question. Can you get a cosmos, the cosmos that we see, with the complex biological designs of the brain and the trumpet or swan, swan by random collision of atoms alone? If randomness takes 36 trillion years to type a single three-word passage, the answer is obvious, not a chance. But even if we ignore this, there's a more serious problem. It turns out that our universe has an exquisite set of properties that a Goldilocks perfect for life to exist. We live in an extraordinarily fine-tuned cosmos, a place where random t any random tweaking wouldn't allow life to exist. If gravity were 2% different, or if you changed the power of the plank length or the atomic mass unit, we would never have the sun or life. So by any stretch of wishful thinking, a cosmos that allows life is inconceivable by chance alone. Randomness is not a tenable hypothesis. Truth be told, it's close to idiotic, right up there with the dog ate my homework. So let's sum up the most basic do-or-die physical conditions for life to come into existence. First, you need two fundamental forces, electromagnetism and the strong force. They must have very specific values. Electromagnetism keeps the electrons attached to atomic nuclei, allowing for the existence of atoms. 
But atomic nuclei wouldn't hold together without a perfectly tuned strong force, which allows protons to cling together. Without multiple protons, the only element that would exist would be hydrogen. And while no one is anti-hydrogen, it couldn't produce any kind of organisms, even if you waited eons until the cows came home. Then you need a third fundamental force, gravity. Not to be too weak, not too strong, or you wouldn't have stars. And I could keep on going, but suffice it to say, there are almost 200 physical parameters that must be exactly what they are within a percentage or so in order for stars to undergo nuclear fission and create their warmth, for planets to form, and for all the elements to be created. In short, yes, it's a perfect universe. And we haven't even gotten to the life creation business with its own crowded stadium of requirements, such as worlds that are not too hot or cold, or radiation-filled, or specific properties of, of key elements, such as, such as oxygen and carbon, that need to exhibit just the characteristics we observe. Even here on Earth, life would be near impossible if we didn't possess the massive nearby moon. That's because the Earth's axial tilt would wobble wildly, sometimes aiming straight into the sun, producing impossibly hot temperatures. Our planet manages to avoid going through such, such chaos because of our moon. And how did we get the moon? By a perfectly timed collision of a Mars-sized body coming at a very specific direction, at exactly the right speed, not too fast or massive to destroy us, and not too small to fail to do the job. Matter, uh, direction matters, but unlike other mass, the other major moons in the solar system, ours is the only one that orbits around its, its, the planet's equator. If it orbited normally, we wouldn't stay in our orbital plane and exert its, tor its torque in a sun vector alignment, which stabilizes our axis. Yet another accident. This is an extremely unlikely universe, so unlikely that even the most die-hard physicists concede that the cosmos is insanely improbable in terms of its life-friendliness. This hyper-unlikely nature, on strictly a physical level, makes physicists sigh with discomfort and it will admit that some sort of scientific explanation is badly needed. If we apply Occam's razor, that is, the simplest explanation is usually the correct one, Biocentrism offers the most obvious explanation for our improbably, improbable life-friendly universe. Why? To me, the answer is simple. The laws and conditions of the universe allow for the observer because the observer generates them.